Brilliant. Hi, Stephen. How are you doing? I'm doing so great. I'm doing awesomely. How are you? I'm doing very well. Very excited to be with uh, Stephen Lamort, the director of The Mean One, which um, has been causing quite a bit of buzz ever since the uh, the trailer dropped. Um, how, how's, how's it been? How's it been going so far? Have you, have you been managing everything? It's been absolutely crazy. Um, we're a tiny little independent film, you know, 15, 18 people are on set every day. And, um, you know, we shot this film over 14 days in May and now six months later to have like this massive trailer response and, you know, response to the pictures and people all around the world want to see it. And we're in theaters here in the United States. And uh, it's it's crazy. It's it's just been nuts. It's a dream come true. Yeah, well, we're we're still waiting for it in France. Um, I'm I'm not going to ask you like your plans for for the release because I'm pretty sure it's already hard enough to get it released in theaters in the United States. Well, I know I know how difficult it is to get a movie released just in its in itself. Um, one of one of the questions actually I had for you when I was watching the trailer, I just mm -hmm. thought, how on earth did anyone come up with this idea? So I wanted to know where did the idea of doing a horror movie based on the Grinch come from? The mean one. On the yes. Mean one. <laughs> yes, the mean one. <laughs> based on the mean one. You know, I um, I got to say, the I've just been a fan of these characters um, and the author for so long. And but even growing up, I remember something about these like creepy little drawings, you know, and uh, some of the like oh, classic cartoons, especially stuff from the 60s and the 70s. You look back on it now, it's it's awesomely analog and organic. Um, but some of them are a little weird. It's a little freaky. And, you know, when the thought of some a giant green monster with a with a and messed up smile and red eyes who hates Christmas drifts through my head, you know, drifted through my head. I said, I mean, if this thing was like Bigfoot or the Yeti or something, he wouldn't be singing. He wouldn't be dancing. He'd be biting faces and slashing throats. So yeah. it kind of all uh, kind of spun from there, um, you know, and that combined with my love of like campy goof, goofy genre films uh kind of led me to making the film and, and kind of throwing all the silliness into it that uh, that we have but is that's really interesting because um well you 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 corrected me earlier by you know it's the mean one we're not going we're going to not going right. to mention the the, the other the name. other guy yeah <laughs> but um it seems to me as though your your inspirations were more the um dr seuss's work as opposed to the ron howard movie would would that be, would that be the case? Uh, yes, I mean we're we want to kind of homage the spirit of the kind of the original story. Um, and the cool thing about the film um, is that uh, because we love the author and we love these works so much, in addition to references to my favorite movies, like there's a Jurassic Park homage in there, mm -hmm. you know, Halloween and uh, Psycho, you know, in addition to all that crazy YouTube videos that I like, in addition to all that, we've got a whole bunch of Easter eggs in the film for anybody that's a fan of the author's work. So, um, and I think there's a couple of articles floating around of people who have like, you know, try to like make the list, but yeah. we have everything from uh, Redfish, Bluefish are in there. You can spot green eggs and ham are floating around in the background. So there's like all kinds of fun little stuff that, um, you know, we just wanted to, to put in and it takes a little bit of extra effort when you're trying to shoot a low budget movie really fast, but uh, it's just super fun and, and something we really enjoy. Uh, that's that's something I'm I'm really looking forward to seeing. I'm a, I'm a massive fan of the uh, the author as well, and um, I suppose one of the questions I did have for you was um, if you were going to make any other horror movie based on any of his work, where would you go? <laughs> like, what what would you want to do? Ooh, that's a that's a good question. I mean, we're there's so. I've definitely, it's actually kind of the fun part of my job is, you know, going to screenings and uh, meeting people and having people come up and say, Hey, you know what? Um, if you, uh, I don't know if you've seen that Mike Myers movie, but uh, you know, yeah. the cat, <laughs> you know, um, that's a scary, that, that guy always freaked me out. Can you do something yeah. like that? Or, or what about the, the little yellow dude that, uh, you know, is trying to get everyone to be environmental? <laughs> like, couldn't that be some kind of monster? Wouldn't he bury people in the ground? So I, you know, I've, been getting hit with a million ideas and um, <laughs> I, I don't have anything locked in. I know that I would love to be able definitely to bring uh, the dog yes. that, you know, the, like the mean one sidekick. Yeah. I would love to bring that in, you know, to a, a story in the future would be like my dream because I like have a sketch. I have a whole design for it and um, we'll see if, uh, if someday he comes to life.
That'd be great, actually. There's there's a lot of the, there's quite a few uh, really good like little shorts based around the dog as well, which uh, which mm-hmm. I love. Um, I, we can't really talk about the mean one without mentioning um, David How- Howard Thornton. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's he's had a massive year. Uh, Art the clown. Uh, he played uh, this year as well in Terrifier Two. Uh, how did he? How did you get him to join the project? And was he always the person you had in mind to play the mean one? Well, I mean, I'm I'm very fortunate that um, you know I went to high school with uh, a bunch of the producers of, from Terrifier. So mm. you know, I know uh, the fuzz and the lens guys. Shout out to Steve, Mike, and Jason. I've known those guys for years. Um, so I've been following Terrifier since since the first one was just kind of bubbling and, and coming into public consciousness. And once we realized that the movie, our movie, the mean one, that he wasn't going to speak, that it was scarier if this character, because there was iterations where maybe he would speak in rhyme or you know he yeah. would have some kind of creepy voice. Once we realized he wasn't going to speak and he was going to be more of a feral, yeti, kind of a Bigfoot thing, we said we knew we were going to need someone really expressive who's not just a, a creature performer, but a performer. Um, and I said, I'm going to give Terrifier um, another watch. And the guys had been showing me footage behind the scenes of Terrifier 2 before it came out, like just on their phones. Like, look, we blew this head up. Look at this, you know, showing me these crazy stuff. I said, this movie is going to be huge. But David is just so talented. And watching him work on screen is is fantastic. So when we approached him with the movie, I, you know, I said, here's my pitch. But you got to read the script because yeah. it's, uh, you know, we're not trying to to integrate the characters. Like this is a, this is a love letter to a story that I really dig, but with our parody spin on it. Um, so it is funny and it's silly. So I want you to read it and take a look at it. And once he read the script, um, we chatted, we vibed and he were, were like, okay, how do we make the, cause he doesn't live in California. So we're like, okay, we, we're going to figure out a way let's make this happen. And every day that he was on set was just a, a blast. It was so much fun. Uh, I'm honestly, I'm so happy for him as well, because the Terrifier series has been going on for quite some time now. Um, I think the All Hallows Eve might have been the first mm-hmm. one. That's we are right. very, we are very big horror fans here at, at Small Screen as well. And one of the things I love uh, this year, especially, there seems to be a lot of small budget horror movies that are actually making not just a lot of money, but also k- kind of being being in the headlines more, um, and not just for bad reasons but also for good you know for good reasons mm-hmm. is is that something that you're seeing is do you think there's like a, a kind of a boost of uh, of genre movies maybe after the after the pandemic i wanted to get your opinion on that definitely i mean horror has always been something that has been a communal experience right and streaming is awesome and you could get a streaming service um, you know, and watch all the horror movies you want, but you know, you get your phone out or yeah. maybe it's, you're watching it daytime or you start it and you stop it, you get up to go to the bathroom, whatever, but something about being in a room with other horror fans or maybe people who aren't horror fans, maybe someone brought their significant other, you know, or didn't know what they were coming into when they went to go see it. And then, you know, laughing or shrieking or watching the, uh, you know, handsome or man or the beautiful woman who's like decides let's split up and walk down. Let me go towards the sound. Like there's something (laughs) just inherently fun about that. And I really think that people are embracing the genre because they, they want to have that experience. They want to get out of the house and be with other people and, you know, kind of have that fun, whether it's shock or schlock uh, experience. So it's a great year for horror and all of the horror films that came out this year, especially the little indies, they're all so different. You know, even smile, was never supposed to be in theaters. It was supposed to be like direct to Paramount Plus or something like that. And, um, you know, they worked at it. They went to, they made it better than it should have been, I assume. Um, and it like found its way out into the world and it made a whole bunch of, of money and people were talking about it. And it couldn't be more different from Terrifier, which couldn't be more different from the mean one. So it's yeah. it's a it's a great time to be making independent films, especially uh, genre fair. Yeah, it's been a, that Smile actually might end up in uh, Small Screen's top ten films of the year, as as will Terrifier too. And hopefully, when I when we finally get to see uh, the Mean One when it's uh, out in cinemas, I, w- I really want to see it in the cinema. That's something that uh, that has been a big thing for me, and that's one of the things about these horror movies that you you mentioned going to see it in in theaters is is really important. Um, there was one other horror film that came out this year. Uh, which is based on the Winnie the Pooh character. Mm -hmm. And uh, I wanted to know if you thought that the films like your film and the Winnie the Pooh film would maybe spawn these sorts of horror films that are based on beloved 
basically children's characters. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I wanted to get your opinion on, on what might happen in the future. I mean, look, the, the, the field is wide open. I mean, it's yeah. the, the fact is like where, I mean, one of the reasons why Disney, who we love, um, you know, made their, their first animated stories is because those are all based on, you know, Grimm's fairy tales, right? Yes. So, I, you know, people have been taking a story that's been told over and over and over again and, and putting it with a twist on it you know, as long as we've been making movies. Um, and I think this, this is a trend that's not going anywhere because it's, it's fun. You know, I mean, it's the, you know, all filmmakers, we're all like kids at heart, right? We're, we're in the sandbox and we want to play with our toys. And, and sometimes that means, you know, taking, uh, this kid's character and, and making him the monster, you know, or, you know, taking a, uh, these heroes and making them villains. And I think that that, uh, because, it's easier to make a movie now than it's ever been. You're going to have all these wonderful original takes on, um, you know, classic things and and characters and stories. And uh, I think it's awesome. You know, they, and they're going to all be different. And some of them I'm sure will be good. And some of them will be bad. And some of them will be funny. And some of them will be scary. And and I'm here for it. Like make more movies. <laughs> um, do you have any plans for a sequel to the mean one? Do, <laughs> I get this question a lot. Um, <laughs> I, I and I. I don't, I have plans for a sequel, um, but if I did, I would definitely have an outline and I would definitely have sketches for new monsters and there'd be a whole bunch of kill scenes and it would be like a cross between the mean one and I guess Die Hard would be the closest thing, bigger wow. and greener and meaner, but I don't, it doesn't exist and I have no plans for a sequel, but if I did, it would be all of those things, um, but I don't, but if all I right. did. If you did, <laughs> it, it would be, if, if we, if I did, it would be crazy and so fun, but I don't. Okay, well, what are you working, <laughs> what are you working on next then? What was coming out after the mean one? After the mean one, um, I've got two new projects coming up. Um, the next one that's coming out of mine that's finished is a uh, zombie film noir mashup. Um, mm. So it's shot in the style of Sin City. It's the story of a uh, uh, washed up hard boiled detective who's trying to solve the case of, uh, of a missing girl. Mm -hmm. um, and it turns out, you know, they're 1950s Los Angeles, Hollywood, you know, detectives, femme fatale, all that stuff. And it turns out she's patient zero of the zombie apocalypse. So he gets a group together and they say, hey, if we can figure out what happened to this girl, we can save the city and, and hopefully save the world. Very interesting. That sounds really, really cool. Yeah, um, it's all black and white, green screen, super fun. And that'll be out next year. And then I have another parody I'm working on based on a thing people have heard of. I haven't announced it yet. Um, but because uh, I'm still making sure I love the idea, because anytime you take on a new movie, it's like getting a roommate, right? We're going to get in, <laughs> you're going to, you know what I mean? Like this thing's yeah. going to be around for two years. Am I sure this is the book we, you know, I want to read cover to cover every day for six months, you know? Um, that makes sense. But, uh, yeah. So those are, those are the two new things that I have percolating. But uh, it, it'll be everything that I do. It'll be, you know, all about fun and spectacle and hopefully a little bit of heart. Oh, that's cool. Um, there, there's a, there is one question before before uh, we let you go that I have I, I've always wondered and asked this about um, independent two independent filmmakers. Did you have any difficulties in bringing it from the the page to the screen? Um, if anyone if anyone's looking or, uh, to make an independent movie, any sort of film, uh, what would your uh, what would your advice be to them? Um, yes, getting the movie made, um, look, getting any movie finished is, is a minor miracle, right? Yeah. Even the, the most terrible, complete movies, good on you for getting it done. Congratulations. <laughs> you made a thing, right? Your, your baby is out in the world. Um, it was not easy to get the film made. We had a lot, hit a lot of roadblocks, um, because the movie's so small, you know, we're not backed by a major studio. We're not a huge company. Our marketing department is me and the producer, who's also my fiance. She's stuck with me. Right. So we're, we're a tiny, a tiny little production. Um, and, uh, you know, what I would say to anyone that, you know, has an idea or, or wants to make their movie is just go do it, you know, and don't yeah. take no for an answer. You're, you know, you're, if you know, you need 10 pennies and you only have five pennies. Well, it's time to do a rewrite because that, you know, while you're waiting for the, the, the planets to align and someone to hand you that golden ticket, life's passing you by, make your movie, get out there, find a way. If the story's good, people will respond. You can connect directly with your audience, build a fan base and 
maybe you'll get a golden ticket on the next one, but you know, just, just do it. Like that's, that's what I tell people all the time. You have the tools, you can look up online how to do pretty much everything. Like just, just do it. And if, if it's really good, the, an audience will find it and you can, uh, you make your own, you make your own way. You don't need some big studio to, to give you permission, get out there and just yeah. do it. That's, that's, that's the perfect adv advice, I think. And um, for anyone that wants to find uh, the mean one, wants to be able to watch it, where, where can they where can they find it? Well, the mean one is uh, is actually still in theaters here in the United States, which is crazy. Mm -hmm. We're only supposed to be in theaters for one week, and we just got extended. Uh, you know, the Monday after they said, "Okay, you get one more week." Um, yeah. So you know, we'll be playing with Avatar, which is. <laughs> crazy that both of our movies are going to, I mean, our budget was like their shoelace budget. Like yeah, exactly. just what, what, just what <laughs> yeah. like they probably spent more on like hard drives than we spent on the whole film. I mean, it's just crazy <laughs> um, that we'll be on the marquee at the same time at some of these theaters. So we're in theaters for at least another week. Um, and if people have a theater near them, you know, we hope that uh, they'll get out there and see it because if we do well this week, the mean one will be around for Christmas. And that's really my goal is to uh, have our, goofy little green guy making people laugh in theaters the week of Christmas. Um, and for anyone that's not, doesn't have access to it, the best thing you could do is follow us on social media, right? At the mean one movie, uh, whether that's Instagram or Facebook, um, or sign up on our website, the mean one movie.com, uh, to find out when the movie's coming to streaming or to see the list of theaters or, you know, just to keep up with what's going on because, um, we'll be bringing the movie to the world as soon as we possibly can. Perfect. That's wonderful. Well, thank you so much uh, for talking with us, Stephen. It's been an absolute pleasure and best of luck with the movie. And I, ca I can't wait to see what you do next. And I can't wait to, to, to get to see this film because I've been very excited about it for a very long time. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Look, it's a, it's a silly good time. The best thing you could do, you know, it's not a, we, we keep telling people like it's, it's, it's not terrifier, right? It's a, a, it's no. a, a goofy, campy, like, you know, the feel good horror movie of the season is what we're, we're telling people like, get in there, have a beer, get some popcorn, you know, go with your friends and, and have a good laugh. So I'm, uh, I'm looking forward for you seeing it too. Yeah. It sounds exactly like my sorts of movie. I'm going to be honest. Terrified too go. was probably a bit, a bit too much for me. I'm going to be honest. It, but, it was a lot. <laughs> it's yeah. a lot. It, yeah. I mean, I can never look at mashed potatoes the same way ever again. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, David, David, you're so he's he's just so nice. It's so great to work with. And I'm like, <laughs> you know, David, I went to see Terrifier for you, but that was uh, yeah. it took me a second. We walked out of my we walked out of the theater like oh, we got to be nicer to David because that is a <laughs> that movie was intense. <laughs> that was intense. Thank you. Thank you so much, Stephen. Good luck with everything. Can't wait to see them. Thank more. you very much. Great chatting. We'll see you again soon.